which pump res combo is actually the best. We put them head to head in an epic race for claim to victory, coming right up. G'day guys, my name is Corey and I run the Designs by IFR YouTube channel. In today's video, we are putting different companies' pump res combos on the line to test which ultimately is the best for your water cooling loop. You guys are absolutely gonna love this, so go ahead for me and hit that subscribe button. We will be testing a number of D5 pumps and we also threw in a DDC pump into the mix to see how it compares. We'll be setting up a big loop run in various forms which not only test the flow rate, but also the head pressure that these pumps are able to produce. The first loop that we will be testing is mainly for flow rate. It's gonna be a simple long straight run and we will be timing each of these to see which is able to push the liquid out to the end the fastest. Now all three of our D5 pumps actually run at 4800 RPM, but the big thing here is how much liquid can they move in liters per hour? Now the Bits Power DDC didn't actually have any specs online, however the Corsair pump right here, according to its specs, can push 800 liters per hour, making it Technically the worst performing out of the three D5 pumps. Next we have the Thermaltake Pacific PR22 coming in at 1,135 liters per hour. Lastly, we have the EK Quantum Kinetic coming in at a whopping 1,500 liters per hour, making it the clear standout in the specs, but will it win the flow rate test? Our second loop, we will be shifting the loop to create a lot of head pressure. We'll be having tube runs going up and down a few meters to actually test all of these out. Now, as I said, we actually have no specs online for the Bits Power DDC pump, so I'm unsure if it's even going to be able to make the loop. Now, here's where it gets very interesting. So the EK Quantum Kinetic is able to push liquid 3.9 meters into the air, whereas the Thermaltake PR22 is able to push it 4.5 meters. Now, as you guys would know, a regular loop does go up and down in a case. However, these are able to push so much that I don't think it's gonna to make too much of a difference unless we made our loop three meters to four meters high, which technically is gonna be pretty hard to do. So we're gonna make it go up and down by one meter intervals. Now the Corsair one is lagging behind a bit with a pump head pressure of 2.1 meters. However, our loop is not gonna go above two meters, so it should be able to make the loop. For our third and final test, we want the ultimate of both situations, flow rate and head pressure. So we are going to reshape the loop to make the tubes only go up to roughly 400 millimeters at max. Because if you look at a normal PC water cooling loop, the tubes will only vary about that much. So this really is the ultimate test. Who do you think would win? I want your predictions down in the comments before you watch the video, and then we'll see if you are right in the end. I'm quite interested to see if technical specs do actually come out on top. It's a beautiful day here in Sydney, Australia. Sun is shining, birds are chirping, my dog is whining, and the grass is looking greener than ever thanks to our new sprinkler. The first course is set up and has been tested to add a few drops of liquid into the loop to make it fair for all contestants. The Bits Power DDC will be our first tester. The timer will start as soon as we see liquid peer through the fitting and will end once the first bit of liquid drains out of the end. I will be getting the times in post process so my lousy reaction time plays no part in this. Each pump res combo will be disconnected and reconnected to the same loop for a fair battle. I will start the pump cycling and then open the valve to begin. I hope you all understand the process, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the flow rate test.
We have absolutely no idea who won that battle, but let's redesign the loop to allow for a lot of head pressure. Let's begin. Now believe it or not, there is actually some valid point to this video. The loop in your PC travels up and down, left to right, taking liquid to the blocks and collecting the heat to be removed at the radiator. The faster the liquid flows through the water block, the more efficiently it collects and carries away the heat. In all honesty, all these pumps move liquid at a decent enough rate and any temperature difference would be absolutely minimal and perhaps not even represented in a real water cooling scenario. But this funnel test combines the up and downs that you would normally see in a PC as well as the flow rate. So let's see which pump res combo is ultimately the winner. With all of the tests concluded, we actually got some pretty interesting results. It was actually the complete opposite of what I was expecting myself, but you know, sitting down thinking about it a bit more actually made a lot of sense. Now, DDC pumps are fantastic and known to have a lot of head pressure. However, once you start adding in resistances and ups and downs and everything like that, it seems to slow it down quite a lot. D5 pumps thrive at pushing a large volume of water. So with all of that push power behind it, the resistance is minimal. And in fact, the force behind the water helps to drive the water ahead faster. So let's actually take a look at the graph and the patterns that we experienced. The Bits Power DDC achieved 0.57 seconds in the straight run with no gravity playing a factor. Now this is because the DDC has a higher head pressure and the flow rate didn't really play too much of a part in this test. Once we change the loop around to shoot upwards, the gravity is pulling the liquid down while the pump pushes. Because the pump doesn't have a flow rate similar to that of the EKD5, we saw its time increase to complete the loop. It didn't have that force behind it like the EK pump had to fight gravity and resistance. The Corsair pump was the worst performing, followed by the Thermaltake pump, both being beaten out by the DDC on all of its tests. However, I think that if we had more 90 degree bends, as well as ups and downs in the tubes, then the D5s would catch up. One thing that I did notice with the Corsair pump is that it actually traps a lot of air in the D5 compartment. There's only a real small hole for the inlet for the water to get through. Corsair really need to widen that to allow the air to escape much easier. We had some fairly interesting results with the D5 pumps as well. They were extremely slow at the straight run because they lacked the head pressure that the DDC has. When we tested them going straight up, they performed very well. However, the biggest point of interest I have, which showed with all of the D5 pumps, is the fact that they performed their best with only 400 millimeters of climb. 
The best reasoning for this that I can think of is that gravity is still pulling down on the liquid and does this enough to have the pump throw force behind the traveling liquid. However, gravity doesn't remain a contributing factor for as long as the one meter straight up climb. So liquid can shoot down the straight much sooner, but with the same amount of force applied. So my conclusion is that if you have a very simple water cooling loop, the DDC is probably the way to go. It actually traveled twice as fast as second place in the complete straight run. If you do have a more complicated loop, then the EK Quantum Kinetic is probably the best choice for you to choose. Now in saying that the D5s performed pretty bad in the simple straight run, the EK Kinetic actually did twice as well, if not better, than the other two D5 pumps in the straight run. So this pump is a beast, and if anyone wants to get something like this for an all-rounder, this is definitely the pump to get. Anyway guys, that concludes this video. I hope you all learned something today. Certainly not the usual video that we do, but I would like to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Did you guess correctly as to which would be the clear winner? Obviously the straight run was the DDC and for everything else was the EK Quantum. Let me know if you guys guessed correctly and I'll be down in the comments to check those out. If you would like to support us, it is greatly appreciated. The Patreon link and YouTube member link is down in the description below. That helps us out a bunch. And also we have a new merch store, unfortunately, Shirts sure, hidden behind everything, but we have the overclocked design and we also have more designs. The link will be in the description for that. Also leave all of these pumps in the specs down below as well. You can go check those out if you're interested in purchasing any of these pumps. Check out more videos on the channel. We've got lots of custom PCs, reviews, modding tutorials, liquid cooling guides, and much more. And we'll see you all in the next one.